Thank you. You may be seated. Is this the one you were calling up? Yeah, but I'm going to do the regular okay. announcements and stuff before that. Fees, then such fees will be ordered 
to be paid value at that time. Now this morning you are not here for the trial of your case. You are here for a procedure known as the arraignment, which includes the setting of a bond. As your name is called, please step forward. You will be asked when you receive the copy of your indictment or information, and whether or not you understand the charges placed against you. The law provides that after you are served with an indictment or information, you have 24 hours before you must answer that indictment or information. If it has been less than 24 hours since you received a copy of your indictment or information, but you wish to be arraigned this morning anyway, you may waive the 24 hours notice and we will conclude your arraignment this morning. If your case is proceeding by information, uh, I will ask your attorney to place on the record that they discussed with you the waiver of presentment of your case to the grand jury. You will be asked if you understand the charges placed against you and if you knowingly and willingly sign the waiver. You will also consent that the charges proceed by information instead of by indictment and if you wish to continue to be arraigned by waiving the 24 hours notice and then the reading of the information. Finally, you will be asked how you plead. If you want to plead guilty but you do not have a lawyer, the court will assign counsel for you so that you may have a full understanding of your constitutional rights before entering a plea of guilty. Your case will be assigned to a judge whether you plead guilty or not guilty. And those of you in the county jail, you do have the right to be present in the courtroom. And uh, Mr. Corrigan, are you aware if any inmates wish to be arraigned in the courtroom today and do not uh, waive their right to be present? Just Mr. Uh, Derek Green, Your Honor, coming over. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, then we'll proceed. This case is Carmine Agnello, 4496BH. Council's present. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Ian Friedman, 216-696-1422, with Roger Sinnenberg. 622-2727, uh, six, six, two, 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 seven, two, seven, Your Honor. Okay, uh, and uh, we have here from the state of Ohio, uh, County Prosecuting Attorneys Matt Meyer and uh, Chris Schroeder. Uh, the court has... Uh, before a petition for rid of habeas corpus uh, was uh, signed yesterday uh, and filed. And uh, I believe that uh, Mr. Agnello had not been charged at this point in time. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. And uh, there is a, uh, he has been, he had his first appearance then in. Uh, He's not been declared yet. Court. No, no, Your Honor. No appearances in two days. All right. Uh, so the state uh, wish to respond at all with, with respect to the uh, petition for the habeas corpus? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Matthew Meyer on behalf of the state, along with my co-counsel, Chris Schroeder. We are in receipt of the petition, and we agree with the petition to the extent that we are asking the court today to set a bond for Mr. Agnello. He's being held on an arrest warrant, signed by the Honorable Judge Peter Corrigan. Uh, the allegations of the arrest warrant are uh, quite uh, significant. He's alleged to have committed theft in a first degree felony amount of uh, over $3 million according to the investigation to date. Uh, conspiracy, uh, a second degree felony level, money laundering, a third degree felony level, as well as numerous misdemeanors involving cruelty to animals, drugging horses, and competing in sports. The state would recommend that Mr. Agnello receive a $1 million bond based on several factors that uh, are appropriate under Criminal Rule 46C. Uh, first, in this case, there's extremely strong evidence of his guilt. Mr. Agnello runs a scrapyard or a series of scrapyards where he systematically overweighed cars uh, and defrauded the regional scrap metal facility, the victim in this case, of over $3 million, as I said earlier. Uh, he has an extensive criminal record. He was convicted in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of New York uh, involving charges. He likewise dealt with a scrap metal facility. In that case, he made over $11 million of restitution to the federal government. Uh, he was ordered to uh, refrain from being involved in the scrap metal 
King Street in New York. He was on probation, or excuse me, parole for three years. While he was on parole in that case, he was involved in a traffic incident here in Northeast Ohio in which he threatened the life of a park ranger in Northeast Ohio and pled guilty to disorderly conduct. Uh, Your Honor, in this case, additionally, during the search warrants that were recently executed, uh, new offenses have come to light that the state was previously unaware of. Specifically, Mr. Agnello was found in possession of two firearms within his home, and as a federal felon, those firearm offenses under federal law have extremely significant penalties. Additionally, Your Honor, Mr. Sternberg mentioned uh, Mr. Agnello's business in his petition for rid of habeas corpus. I'll show you a couple of photographs here, my colleagues can see. To the outside of the scrapyard, you'll see a hose running into the sewer. That hose leads to a pit of used motor oil. And I anticipate felony offenses due to the environmental crimes that were discovered at Mr. Agnello's scrap metal facility. So he's, in addition to all that, apparently poisoning our water supply. Uh, based on this record, Your Honor, the city has no confidence that he'll abide by reasonable restrictions in a bond, and that's why we asked for $1 million. Finally, Your Honor, Mr. Agnello has no ties to the Gambino crime family. He is a known soldier or main man in the family. He's a former son-in-law of John Gotti, the head of the family. And his uh, relationship with that criminal organization is a matter of public record. So based on all that, uh, we submit that one million would be reasonable. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council, wish to respond? Yeah. Let's start. You finish. Your Honor, I'll, I'll begin, and then uh, Mr. Sinnebuck's going to finish. Yeah, I have to say, and I think the court recognizes that uh, in, in the decades that I've been here, I don't recall the last time that someone who was not charged with any offense at all was hailed into a courtroom with the media put on call ahead of time, the prosecution coming forward with photos and making all sorts of allegations. When has someone been called into the felony arraignment room who not only does not have a felony, does not even have a misdemeanor, and in fact, take it even back further, has not even been charged with an offense? Clearly, at this time, he's been sitting in the, in the Cleveland Municipal Jail. He's been there for two days, and he's not even been charged with an offense. So I, I would draw the court's attention to the same place that my colleague, uh, Mr. Meyer, has, which is to Criminal Rule 46C. Uh, and when eliciting the factors for this court's consideration, I think it's very important just to simply go to subsection C1. Uh, and when C begins in determining the types, amounts, and conditions of the bail, the court shall consider all the relevant information, including but not limited to. The very first provision, number one, the nature and circumstances of the crime charged. It is the very first provision of the rule that is applicable to this morning's proceedings. There is absolutely no crime charged. The writ that was filed yesterday uh, is, is right on point. There should not even be a bond set at this point. He should be ordered released because merely to come up forward and say we have these photographs and he's got connections and so forth, you can try and dirty a man up all you want, but the rules still require that if you're going to bring someone here in the court, there has to be a crime charged. That's not been done at all. He served his time. Uh, any uh, connections to family members and so forth by marriage, that is historical. Uh, his father-in-law was his ex-father-in-law, uh, who has now since passed. There's been no connection, uh, as reported, back to any families back in New York at all. Uh, what we do know is that he's been here, he's been in Cleveland, he's been living in Bentleyville with his wife, uh, they've been married, with three children, and the guy works tirelessly. It's one thing that no one's going to be able to contest. He's got the three yards in the Harvard and 116th area, and he works there day and night. So if they want to bring a charge and then talk about bond, that's fine. But you can't just bring someone in hold up pictures to the world and say he's a bad guy, and then say, and we want a $1 million bond against this guy, but not charge him. There's got to be a process here. That has not been done. The writ is exactly on point, as I said, and respectfully, we would ask that this court order his immediate release. If the court does feel that a uh, bond be necessary, then I call the court's attention to the next provision under Criminal Rule 46, which is when someone uh, is here, uh, per summons that even a personal recognizance bond be put in. Here, 
is not even a charge. So when someone comes into a charge, that is what is preferred. When there's no charge, there's no basis for it. And Roger, do you have anything to add, please? I really can't anything in it, except, Judge, if you should consider setting a bond, and we believe it should be released on his own recognizance, we would ask that it be a, a very small bond. He has no passport. He is not a risk of flight. He's got ties to this community. He's had him for several years. He has a home here. His mother lives with him. His brother is sick in a, in a, in a clinic here in Cleveland. He's got three young children. He has no passport. None of these crimes that are that are alleged or even spoken about, they're not, I don't even know if they rise to the level of allegations at this time, are violent. The two guns that he refers to as a 22 rifle and a shotgun that was in his home, allegedly. Um, but there's been no violence in his crime, even in his past, in the past 14 years. It's been 14 years since he's been charged with a felony, Judge. He's turned his life around. He moved to Cleveland to turn his life around and get away from what they're trying to attach to him now. So we think unless and until he's charged with something, Judge, he should be released on his own recognizance. Thank you, Judge. This arrest warrant, which was signed by the Honorable Judge Peter Corrigan, is the charge. A judge of the Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas has found probable cause that Mr. Agnello has committed the offenses listed in this document that in our system functions as a complaint. These are the charges at the moment. He has not yet been indicted. I anticipate he will be indicted within weeks before the Cuyahoga County Grand Jury. This investigation is ongoing. Additionally, Your Honor, uh, police found $60,000 of loose cash when they searched his office and home. We think he is a risk of flight. He has spent many years in prison, and the prospect of many more is upon him. So the fact that he's being held under a lawful arrest warrant compels bond, and the state submits that under the circumstances, $1 million is reasonable. Thank you. Can I see that uh, document, please? Yes. The affidavit is understood. Matt, do you have an extra copy by chance? Okay. Your Honor, may we have a yeah, judge? Can we see the uh, charges, Judge, that they say? I have no objection if they see the sign. Yeah. Thank you. No, we want the affidavit. If you're going to rely upon the affidavits for a bond, we should be able to see it, sir. That's under seal. I'll take it out under seal. There's the difference, obviously, between electronic monitor house arrest where he's limited to his house or are we talking GPS, GPS where we'll still know where he is and this way he can take care of his family because he likes to do stuff with his children, visit his brother uh, who is in the clinic because of, of the development of the cancer, taking care of his mother, everything else. There's no difference, obviously, and he should not be punished and confined to his house, respectfully. Appreciate the court's uh, consideration, but at this point, no charge at all. We would ask that he not be confined to the house as long as if the court is inclined to impose some sort of uh, supervision on him by way of the bracelet, at least allow him to function with his life. 
if the later the case develops and the court feels that there's need to change that, whoever's assigned to it, uh, whatever that may be, that can change. But at this point, particularly in light of the fact that there is no charge, we would ask that the least amount of restriction necessary to accomplish your purpose, Your Honor, be imposed. And putting them in the house, uh, I would respectfully submit, uh, is, is not at the least restrictive method of doing so. If you are object, there are charges, there is no complaint. The charge is the arrest warrant supported by a probable cause determination. And while I would actually agree with my colleagues, the state prefers a higher bond in lieu of electronic monitoring. I believe the only thing Mr. Agnello respects is money. So I would ask for the high bond. Right. So the charges are amended. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to yeah. allow him to go around. Oh. All right, uh, I'll modify the conditions. Again, it's $100,000 first will be GPS monitoring with a uh, condition of court supervised release, and, and there will be a further order. You cannot go into the scrap uh, uh, yard that he owns at this time for further order. Very good. Thank you, Thank Thank you Your Honor. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we'll go to the extradition. In the jail, Mr. Corbett, Adrian Freeman, 596-657. Morning, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, I got my hands full. Good. 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 So you're, you're full name of your position with the prosecutor's office? Matthew Meyer, assistant prosecutor. Spell the last name, please. M-E-Y-E-R. Can you describe uh, the, why the charges have not been filed against Mr. Agnello? At this point, I can't comment about the investigation. It's ongoing. I anticipate that additional evidence will develop. So until that time, I can't comment. Can you describe uh, why you sought such a high bond? Uh, for the reasons I stated in court, uh, these are serious charges, and he has a serious background. And in terms of this environmental thing, can you describe what the authorities did find at the junkyard? Just what I said in open court, and that was uh, a hose running from an open pit of used motor oil into the sewer. Okay. And how would you describe Attached to a pump. And how would you describe, describe that and the, and the impact that it would have on, on the environment? Well, clearly it's a serious charge if um, the allegations are true and Mr. Agnello was open dumping into our sewers. He's poisoning our water, as I said in court. Okay. And, and in terms of the next step, in terms of, the, of filing the charges, what, what happens next? His case will be presented to the Cuyahoga County Grand Jury for indictment. Okay. So, Matt, are you disappointed in, in the fact that basically he got a, a personal signature bond? No, the requirements of his bond, in essence, uh, compel him to stop the corrupt activity that he's been alleged to have engaged in. State satisfied. Okay, you feel safe, fairly sure that there are going to be additional charges that we are unaware of at this point. Yes, they're coming. Lots? I can't comment. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about me and the person that I've seen photos too, since 